Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm joined today by Ben Stewart who just preached a sermon on death. Ben, thank you so much for being here. So excited to have you. Uh, A lot of questions came in. Obviously, death uh, is something that's on all of our minds, right? Uh, And so the first question was from someone who admits that they are afraid of death as or we all, yeah. Um, and specifically, they, they referenced Matthew 7, talking about how, how can you possibly know that you won't be one of the ones left saying, Lord, Lord, um, and he mm-hmm. says, I never knew you. you know, yeah. how, how can we know, how, how can we have assurance of the resurrection? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, if you, if you look at that passage, the people who Jesus says that to, mm-hmm. he doesn't deny they did good works, miracles, cast out demons in his name. So sometimes people read that and go, oh, what do I have to do to make sure I get to go to heaven with him? You go, well, these people had done a lot. His criticism was not their lack of good work. He doesn't deny, hey, you even cast out demons, man. Like you did some serious stuff, but but I didn't know you. And so the crux of the whole thing is, do you know him? You know, John will say it in 1 John, he who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. At the end of the day, it's what have you done with the Son, Jesus Christ? And that's what the sermon is about. It's, yeah. All my hopes are pinned on His work, not mine. Right. And, and, I mean, the, the, the human mind, human soul is a frail thing. So if you're like, well, it depends on my level of confidence in a given moment. Well, good luck with that because sure. our level of confidence rises and falls. It's not the strength of our faith that saves us. Mm -hmm. It's the strength of our Savior that saves us. So you're like, I may at times feel like my faith is small, but is it in the right person? And the Bible is really clear all over it about that. When you have him, you know, Jesus said it in Luke 5, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. I mean, he, he wants to put it there and give you confidence in his language that you know me and trust me, you have life. Sure. And so I would say, don't look in yourself and try to say, do I see within me the right mixture of whatever for assurance? Right. I would say, look at the cross right. and do I believe that what he did uh, counted for my sin? That's where your hope's going to be found. That's right. And I, I feel like sometimes we forget or we don't even know how radically abundant God's grace is. Yeah. Um, and we trust in our doubts rather than, like you said, looking at the cross. Well, a lot of times we look at ourselves for assurance right. and, and too much self-analyzation is going to lead you to despair. That's true of everybody. Right. You know, Charles Spurgeon said it. If it was on me to preserve my salvation, I'd have lost it by now. That's He's right. like, I'm just, I go through seasons of, of I'm a mess. Well, we all are, yeah. but, but my hope is in him. That's right. And, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And for those who are in Christ, we are promised the resurrection, uh, according to 1 Corinthians 15. And so we had a question that came in, though, because obviously there were people around before Jesus. Yeah. Um, and what happens to them? They died before Jesus came, before he resurrected. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happens to them since they died before Jesus? Yeah, I mean, that's a longer question, too. But, you know, um, salvation has always been by the grace of God right. through faith in God. It's always been that way. So, like I said, even in the garden with, with Adam, where did he get life? It was by coming by faith to the tree, right. you know, so he had to live by faith yeah. in the grace of God. Yeah. Now it looked different. There wasn't sin, but it was still intimacy with God is always by the grace of God right. through faith in God's instrument. Right. When Adam sinned, you get Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head, that all of our hope is now fixed in a boy. You get that in Genesis 3. Right. And you see it two verses later, Noah's dad says, perhaps my son will give us rest from the curse on the ground. And that's where he got the name Noah, rest. And it's interesting because you go this several generations later, right. where does this guy get the idea that a, a boy will be born that has the power to give us rest from the curse of sin? You know, like he was trusting in Jesus' pronouncement from the garden or God's pronouncement. So, so all through the Bible, the people of God have 
look to the kindness of God, not their merit, not their obedience to the law, the kindness of God through faith in God mm -hmm. to provide salvation. Now, they just lacked the level of information we have. Right. One day some will come. Right. They'll look like this lamb that was slain. They'll look like a king. There are things they knew about them. Sure. But um, it was the death of Jesus Christ for sin that purchased their forgiveness. Romans 3 is pretty clear on that, sure. right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so it's always by grace, always by faith, always through the finished work of Jesus. Sure. It's just how much information was available. Right. And now we're in the age where there's full disclosure. Right. And so we're held accountable to the name, person, work of Jesus Christ. Right. So, so people need to know. Yeah. And so all those people that were a part of Israel before, they had that covenant promise that God made with them. Yeah. And they just hadn't seen it fulfilled yet. Um, yeah. But they, they're still part of that covenant. That promise still applies to them yeah. as well. By faith. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Now, um, another question came in, and this is kind of a tough question. Um, what if we know someone and we are as sure as we can be that that person didn't know Jesus um, and, yeah. and they died? Mm -hmm. um, what, what can we say uh, to family members and to to people who knew that person um, yeah. to try to offer some sort of relief or comfort? Yeah, I think uh, that's a hard question. One of the benefits we have is at the end of the day, we don't have to be the one that makes the final call sure. what yeah. they believed or didn't believe when mm -hmm. they died. Yeah. So we don't have to say that person not have faith in Christ and therefore like I think you qualified or it's like I have reason to believe they never put their faith in Christ but but at the end of the day you can say I don't know what was going on there but I do know that the Bible's really clear he who has the son has the life he who does not does not have life and so if anything let it propel you into the seriousness of going we have life we know him we know his name and I want people to know him. You can't make people believe. You can't, but you can present it. That's why Paul was like, that's why I'm suffering, facing persecution. I'll go Absolutely. through whatever to get this message to people. Why? Because this message matters. Yeah. And so I want my family to know, and I want people to know. And, you know, for me, when I've had family members who are sick, I'm like, well, they never really like to talk about spiritual things, but I'm going to go anyway because yeah. I, they need to know him. Definitely. And um, so I would say, let that propel you to share the gospel far and wide because this, this message is vital. Absolutely. But when it comes to that loved one, at the end of the day, if you lack any confidence they did anything, you can't look to that moment. Well, I know they prayed once. You can't look to that. Mm -hmm. Then ultimately you just have to say, I trust God with the governing of the universe. Yep. I trust him with them. I trust him to be good. I trust him to be loving, wise, just. Yeah. I just have to trust him, and and that's really th what you're left with. That's right. And I think that's okay. Yeah, that's a, what Job had to do, right? He buried his head in the dirt and said, I just have to trust that you're a good God. Yeah, that's yeah. what you have at the end of the day, and that is enough, but that's yeah. hard. It is, absolutely. And um, last question, and there was actually a handful of the same type of question that came in. Yeah. Um, people want to know, after we die... And before the resurrection happens, what happens in that in-between time? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. That's next week, man. Okay. <laughs> Part Great. of it. So come back next week. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to pick that up. So okay. I'll just leave it right there. Perfect. Yeah. Great. You heard it. You got to be back next week to find out the answer to that question. Well, Ben, thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank yeah. you all for tuning in. And we'll definitely see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.